it's no surprise that I absolutely love Pokemon, and if you recall back in 2016, I made a list of my favorite Pokemon from the first six generations. That was done in preparation for Generation 7, and with Gen 8 on the horizon, I feel it's finally time to talk about my favorite Gen 7 Pokemon. The Alola region is chock full of so many neat and interesting Pokemon, and narrowing it down to 10 was certainly no easy feat, but I managed. And unlike my top 50, I am allowing Major Legends on this one. The only thing to note is that I'm looking at original Pokemon from this region, so there won't be any Alolan forms on this list. Sorry, Ninetales. Well, it's time to say Alola to 10 fantastic Pokemon. Let's roll! Starting with a starter, huh? Well, that makes sense to me. The starters in this game were some of the most interesting ones yet. You got the cute Rowlet that evolves in the sweet as heck Decidueye. It looks like the perfect Pokemon to start the list, right? Well, too bad. I'm talking about Incineroar. Jeez, where to begin with this thing? How about that awesome design? It's got the wrestler motif going for it, and despite that, it subverted expectations by being part dark type as opposed to fighting. That's pretty neat. But looks aren't everything. I want to know how this thing did in battle, and the answer is... Okay. It's got a great attack stat to go along with its very nice stab combination, but that low speed sadly held it back from doing the best competitively. That being said, where it did end up, in the never used tier, it helped to shape and define the metagame. An event granted it with its hidden ability Intimidate, which is always really helpful, its moveful has great options for offense and support, and that Z move, as well as being superbly flashy, can deal out some ludicrous damage. So while not the best Pokemon ever, I still find Incineroar to be really cool. And hey, it got into Smash Ultimate, so bonus points right there. And we're going from one fire type to another, because next up is the fire lizard, Salazzle. <coughs> This was one of the Pokémon that really stuck out to me when it was revealed, mostly due to that fire-poison typing, which had yet to be done. As well as that, its design, while rather simple, really fits the motif, as many lizards like that are poisonous. Granted, trying to get this thing was a colossal pain, as only 1 out of 8 Salandits are female, and only the females evolve, but getting this thing was well worth it. This lizard is blazing fast with solid offense, making it the perfect glass cannon sweeper, and that type combination hits 5 types super effectively and makes this thing the grass type's worst nightmare. It also has a signature ability in Corrosion, allowing it to poison any Pokémon regardless of type. In concept, this is really neat, however, in practice, it's really impractical. Regardless, this hottie served me very well in my first playthrough of Moon, destroying Fairy and Bug types before they could even blink, and these attributes help it out nicely and competitive as well. We really need more Pokémon with unique type combinations like this. Okay, let's see. Super Repel, check. Hyper Potions, check. Giant Rusty Anchor! Wait, I don't have my Giant Rusty Anchor! Oh wait, there it is. <laughs> Topical references aside, let's talk about Delmise. Its design is just what I pointed out, a possessed Giant Rusty Anchor. Seriously, why do Ghost-type Pokémon consistently have the coolest designs? Anyways, sure this thing looks cool, but can't hold its own in battle? While well, considering it has the attack and defense stats to be a physical tank, I'd say yes. We also have another Pokémon with a cool typing. Sure, Grass and Ghost has been done before, but what makes it better here is Delmise's ability, Steel Worker. This ability effectively grants it a third stab, as it powers up all its Steel-type moves by 50%. Adding to this is its unique move, Anchor Shot, which, well, anchors the opponent to prevent their escape. It may be relegated to end you like Incineroar, but there, it's tremendous, and it also served me really well in a recent Moon Run. I actually got really lucky and caught it in the first fishing spot I tried, and it rounded out my team quite nicely for the endgame. This is definitely one of the most intriguing Pokémon the region had to offer, though I wouldn't recommend bringing one on a date. Puny peasants bow down before the fabulous Queen of the Forest! <laughs> okay, moving on from whatever that was, Serena was one of the first Pokémon that really stuck out to me in this group. For one thing, I love her design. It looks absolutely majestic and regal without being overly hard on the ice. Granted, getting to this fabulous mon was quite the ordeal. Bounce Beat and Stiny were really weak, but the reward was well worth the hassle. Serena has some excellent stats for offense, but not too shabby defense is all things considered. Because of this, it makes for a pretty solid tank, which is surprising considering it's a pure grass type. Adding to this, it did signature move Trap Kick. Not only does it deal some good damage, but it's also guaranteed to lower the attack of whatever opponent it hits. On top of that, it has a unique ability in Queenly Majesty, which straight up blocks any priority moves aimed at her or her allies. Yes, simply her presence is enough to stuff moves like Ice Shard and Bullet Punch. All these attributes made her one of the best allies on my first team in Moon. Once I finally overcame the hurdle of evolving it, I felt like I had been graced by true royalty. Rather fitting if you think about it.
Now I shall have my valiant steed charge into battle, and he will trample the competition! Well, it's not exactly Valiant, but Mudsdale's a pretty cool Pokémon. Sure, its design isn't much besides muddy Clydesdale horrors, but I've always been a fan of simplistic Pokémon designs like this. Mudsdale in battle is a pretty interesting case. Given the stat spread and pure ground typing, it's obvious it's meant to be a physical tank, and it excels at this role. Its signature ability, Stamina, helps tremendously in this position, as it boosts Mudsdale's defense every time it's hit by an attack. This means trying to punch holes in this thing will only make it that much harder to wear down. These attributes helped me out a lot on my first playthrough of Moon. I knew I wanted to raise one out of the gate, and I was not disappointed. Charge my Valiant Steed to victory! Okay, I should really stop that. This thing ain't Valiant. The Ultra Beasts are utterly fascinating to me. These extraterrestrial Pokémon from another dimension is just a brilliant concept. Naturally, though, some are going to shine greater than others. And as for my favorite, it's just a cut above the rest. Seriously, Kartana is one cool Pokémon. Its design is one I call deceptive. Looking at it, it does seem like a fairly weak and harmless Pokémon. Then you look at its stats. Yeah, I wouldn't classify 181 attack as harmless. For reference, that's the third highest attack of any Pokémon, only topped by two Mega Evolutions at that. Add on a speed stat that can outpace a lot, as well as excellent Grass Steel typing, and this thing is quite the scary beast. And for the icing on the cake, with Beast Boost, its attack stat will continue to grow for every enemy it knocks out. Calling Kartana a physical powerhouse is an understatement, and I love using it on my competitive team. Watching it tear apart my opponent's Pokémon like their paper feels amazing. It also has a vital role in supporting the team, defogging away Stealth Rocks for its allies. Unfortunately, given how abysmal its special bulk is, defeating it is easy with even the weakest Ember. Still, fighting this thing can be the equivalent of getting a paper cut between the toes. Yeesh, don't go thinking about that one. When it comes to the mascot legendaries of the 7th generation, you either praise the sun or swear allegiance to the moon. Right from the first reveals, I knew exactly which side I was on. Serving thine Pokémon of the night! Lunala is such an amazing Pokémon. For one thing, that design is all kinds of sick. Of all animals to base it on, I'm glad they went with Bat, because it fits the moon motif so well. But looks aren't everything, obviously, so what else does Lunala have going for it? Well, maybe a great special attack style alongside a superb offensive typing is more your thing. Seriously, Psychic and Ghost complement one another so well on offense, and it only gives it two weaknesses, those being Dark and Ghost. And those weaknesses being Quag weaknesses doesn't mean a whole lot when Lunala's Shadow Shield ability cuts any damage in half when its health is full. And for a cherry on top, Lunala's signature move Moonguy Speed not only hits like a train, but also bypasses any abilities on the target. Lunala has no issue ranking among my favorite legendaries, and I hope it stays that way. In the Alola region, each of the islands has their own guardian deity protecting them from harm. Not only is this such a neat concept for a collection of legendaries, but they're also really interesting Pokémon in their own right. As for my favorite though, I gotta go with the Guardian of Akala Island, Tapu Lele. <laughs> First off, that design. It's so freaking adorable! Oh my goodness, just wanna hug it and... <clears throat> Moving on. In battle, Tapu Lele has a ton going for it. Its superb special stats are complemented nicely by its Psychic Fairy type, making for a brutal special attacker. Adding to this is its ability to create the new Psychic terrain just from being sent out, which not only ends up Psychic-type attacks, but also blocks any priority attack from hitting a grounded Pokémon. So not only is this beast of an attacker totally safe from being picked off by the likes of Bullet Punch and Extreme Speed, but also supports its teammates by giving them that same protection. These traits will make more one of the best Pokémon I've ever used in competitive. Not only do its attacks deal awesome damage, but also keeps its teammates relying on setup safe from being picked off prematurely. Seriously, this Pokémon has it all. And did I mention it's utterly adorable? Because it is! And now, put your hands together for the magnificent performance of Primarina! Even when I first laid my eyes on Primarina, I knew it was going to be one of my favorites. That design just looks utterly majestic and beautiful, perfectly capturing the traits of a mermaid. Plus, its previous forms just look so adorable, how can you not love them? When it comes to battle, this gorgeous songstress has quite a bit going for her. That Water Fairy typing in combination with its great special attack and special defense makes for a superb tank, capable of both dealing and absorbing great amounts of damage. Adding Choice specs to increase her damage output makes her one of the toughest Pokémon to face. Even without that though, when I first played Moon, I had absolutely no hesitation choosing Popplio as my starter Pokémon. Fun fact, I actually got a female on my first go, and that felt pretty special. 
And to top it all off, I have to mention Primarina's exclusive Z-move, Oceanic Operetta. It just looks fantastic and fits the Pokémon so well, but if this made second, then my number one pick has to really be something. Oh come on guys, you know me. If you've been paying attention, you would have noticed a distinct lack of representation for a certain type. Clear the way for the dragon! Out of every Pokémon Gen 7 introduced, none of them compared to how Komo'o just knocked it out of the park for me. That design is super appealing to me, and for the longest time, I really wanted a dragon fighting type. But as you know, looks don't make the Pokémon, and that's certainly true for Komo'o. Its stats lend themselves superlatively to a tank role that few dragons can match, especially with its bulletproof ability nullifying a nice handful of moves. When I first played Moon, I didn't care that I had to wait until near the end of my adventure to get Jang Mo. I wanted it that bad. And I gave it one of my favorite nicknames ever, Sure You Can. Yes, I went with the obvious reference, but it fits so well with its Sky Uppercut. That said, Komo'o's story in competitive is rather special. At the onset of the generation, Komo'o wasn't rarely used, being an absolutely great Pokémon in that tier. Then in Ultra Sun and Moon, it got its own unique Z-move, Clangorous Soul Blaze. This move turns its signature clanging scales into an insanely powerful move that increases all of its stats if it goes off. This gave it enough uses and underuse to have a move there, and even had a nice bag of tricks for overuse as well. Even after its Z-Crystal was banned from underused, it was still really good. Eventually though, its usage and overuse was sufficient enough to make it officially a part of the tier. In short, this dragon hit the weights, took some vitamins, found a shiny crystal, and managed to jump two tiers! Clankerous Soul Blaze allows the Kamoa I use a competitive team, which I named Shin Ryuken, to really go ham once the opponent's fairies have been dealt with. And with the support from Auroraville to suppress incoming damage, it can flat out win battles on its own. Kamoa has everything I love in a Pokémon, and that makes it not only my favorite Alolan Pokémon, but definitely one of my favorite Pokémon, period. I'm Arrow Dragon, and let's get hyped for Generation 8! It feels really good to get this long overdue list out, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm still really close to 1,000 subscribers, and I'm hoping the next countdown I make is my 1,000 subs special, my top 15 favorite video games. You guys are the key to making that happen, so please help me out. Also, this coming weekend, June 21st to the 23rd, I'll be in Oaks, Pennsylvania, attending too many games once again. You might even run into me if you see me there. Keep up to date on my Twitter for where I'll be headed. Until next time, this is Arrow Dragon, signing out.